Hey, are you tired of playing pawn to e4 on the first move? Or maybe you just want to try something new? You know, the most irritating thing about the king's pawn opening is that black has a variety of responses to choose from. In fact, after you play pawn to e4, these are just some of the many responses that black can go with. I mean, you were expecting them to play pawn to e5, but they can also play the modern defense with pawn to g6 or knight to f6, which is the early Irons defense, pawn to e6, the French, d6, the Perk, c6, Karokan, c5, the Sicilian, b6. I mean, there are just so many responses that they can play. And if you are used to e4, e5, you may be taken out of your preparation over and over. But let me show you another approach that you can try out in order to reach the king's pawn middle game position. All right. So our main goal in this new strategy that I want to introduce to you guys is to always play pawn to e4. It might not be in the opening stage, but even in the middle game stage, you will still see pawn to e4 appearing. So the first move that I recommend is knight to f3. Now this is called the zuka dot opening. So the move that you will see most of your opponents playing here is pawn to d5, okay? Yes, sometimes they can play knight to f6, but that will just transpose back into one of the responses that begin with d5. So d5 anyways, that's what we are focusing on. Now right here, most white players like going pawn to g3. I want you to play this move pawn to c4. Now this is officially called the ready opening, but I'm not here to teach you how to play the ready opening. I just want to propose a new strategy that you're going to be using instead of playing the typical lines of the ready opening, such as c4, pawn to g3, you think of the bishop, you castle short. So in this introductory video, we are going to look at four main responses, okay? Number one, pawn to c6. Number two, e6. Number three, pawn to d4. And number four, knight to f6. We are going to look at what to do against each one of these responses. I'm not going to cover d takes e4 as it allows us to play pawn to e4 easily. So let's cover these challenging moves first. So pawn to c6 by blank, that's what you're going to see most of the times. Now, right here is where you play the secret move that I'm going to show you guys. The key move is queen a4. Now this is some kind of a new idea which most super grandmasters are testing out nowadays. The whole idea of queen a4 is to pin the c6 pawn to the king on e8 so that we can freely take on d5 with our c pawn. Once we take black pawn on d5, it will be easier for us to play our second key move pawn to e4. So this is just our simple strategy that we are going to be using throughout our repertoire. Let me show you what I mean. For example, if black plays knight to f6, now we go c takes d5. And please note that if pawn to b5, we always have queen c2. So let's say black takes with the knight. Instead of playing pawn to g3, which is very much playable, I mean, we still don't want to play the ready opening. So we just go pawn to e4. And that's how you can transpose the game back to a king's pawn game. Arguably, this is not a king's pawn game, but our main goal is just to play pawn to e4 and start controlling this center pawn right here. Okay, black plays knight b6 attacking our queen. We go queen b3. Our queen is very safe there. If bishop e6, the final destination for our queen will be c2 and will be good to go. Bishop g4 attacking our knight. We play knight e5 here even though bishop e2 is also playable. But knight e5 is more forcing as it is attacking this bishop right here. If bishop h5, let me show you what is happening here. In case of pawn to f6, we can always retreat our knight to c4 and would love to castle short. So in order for us to castle short, would have to play bishop e2. But before playing bishop e2, we need to play knight to c3 so that if bishop takes, we can take back with our knight and castle short. So that's just the simple strategy and you'll be good to go. But the move that I like playing is pawn to g4 right here. I just like being crazy. If bishop g6, we go pawn to h4. Just going full beam, h6, knight takes g6. And now you can see how we have damaged black spawns on the king side. Next, we want to take on g6. Let's say queen d5 attacking our rook. Well, we just simply take the pawn with check. If king d8, 
we exchange quiz since we are already up a pawn and we should be good to go from here. So this is very simple. You can see how we avoided many responses such as the Karukan defense, the French defense, the Alehines defense, just by playing this opening that looks like the Reti opening. Anyways, back to this position where we just played Queen A4, pinning this pawn to the king and also intending to take on D5. We just looked at what happens after Knight F6 by Black. But here the top played move according to the master's database is pawn to E6, trying to maintain this solid pawn chain. But here we can just continue with pawn takes and obviously they are going to take with their E pawn. Now, wait a second, we still want to play E4. But we can't play it now because of d takes e4. And that's why we first of all need to play this build up move pawn to d3. That will support pawn to e4 later on. Let's say they play knight to f6. Well, we can simply go pawn to e4 once again. Let them take because we can take back with our pawn. And still we have our e4 pawn on the center of the board. Which is one of our main goals. Again, if b5 we have queen c2. Still defending our pawn and we'll continue developing normally. So once again, just by playing the ready opening, we were able to keep our e4 pawn and we'll be able to strengthen it and play this in the king's pawn game style. So bishop g4 for example. Now right here, stockfish likes knight to c3, simply allowing black to damage our pawn structure at the expense of quick development. But here, I mean, you can still go bishop e2 so that if takes you take back with a bishop let's say knight bd7 by black you just continue with your development knight c3 not to mention that if knight c5 our queen can always go back to c2 so bishop d6 we go pawn to h3 we don't want to entertain our enemy's pieces in our territory for a longer period of time bishop h5 we go bishop e3 i mean Queen c7, it is up to us to choose where we want to castle. For example, we can castle long or castle short in this position. Castling short is more safe, but I like playing crazy chess. So you see me castling long most of the times because there's absolutely nothing that black can do. I just want to start fighting. Because of this bishop on h5, I'll be able to push pawn to g4, g5, and then start matching. Alright, so back to this position, instead of pawn to e6 or knight to f6, black may also try bishop d7 in this position. The idea is that if we take, at least they are going to take with their pawn and this bishop will be attacking our queen. So what do we do here? We just simply go queen b3, attacking the b7 pawn and also putting more pressure on the d5 pawn. In this position, queen b6 is the only equalizer that may delay our e4 pawn push so they have to play queen b6 anything other than that will take the pawn and still be able to play d3 and pawn to e4 so knight c3 that's what we play in these types of positions we let black take our queen so that they can help us create a semi-open file for our queen's rook so this is very fine and stockfish likes it so pawn to e6, that's what they are going to play. They are also waiting for us to take their queen so that they can open up their file. The engine wants you to play this in the style of the Catalan. For example, pawn to g3, you fiancero your bishop, you castle short, you play pawn to d4. But if we want to keep everything in the spirit of our e4 repertoire, we can still go pawn to d3 here. They can play knight a6, intending to go knight c5 next. We just simply take the pawn. We simplify the game and after a takes b3, c takes d5, that's when we can go pawn to e4. And now we are back to our king's pawn opening structure and so we should be good to go. If pawn to d4, we can reroute this knight to the king's side, put it on g3 and that will be fine. Alright, let's look at another line. We just finished looking at the c6 line, now we can look at the e6 line. So we start with knight to f3. Black responds with d5, then we go pawn to c4, which is the ready opening. Now, right in this position, instead of pawn to c6, you may see black playing pawn to e6. The beauty about this opening is that it will just be transposing to the same things that we talked about in the other line. So right now, believe it or not, we are now playing the English opening urgent court defense, but we are not going to go into the English lines. We are still going to keep our strategies in mind. At some point, we would love to push pawn to e4. So right in this position, I recommend you go pawn to d3. 
If d takes c4, we always have queen a4 check and we'll be able to win back this pawn. If knight to f6, now it's time to take this pawn. There is no memorization here. We just need to keep in mind our strategy of playing pawn to e4. So anything is playable as long as it is going to support this e4 pawn push. For example, if knight takes d5, but let's say if e takes d5, stopping us from playing pawn to e4, well, we still have this move, queen a4 check. Let's say bishop d7 here, we can simply go queen c2, preparing to go pawn to e4. If bishop g4 will always support our king's knight with our queen's knight to d2. So you may see black playing bishop c6 here. And once again, if you want, you can always play this in the traditional rate style with pawn to g3, you fianchero bishop and castle shot. This will be very solid for you. But wait a second, we still want to go pawn to e4. I have to play pawn to a3, stopping bishop b4 so that now I can play knight bd2 in order to push my pawn to e4. So this is how we make plans in the middle game, okay? Anyways, we're still in the opening stage. We go knight bd2. This bishop can no longer pin my knight so I can push my pawn to e4, they cast a shot, now that's when we play pawn to e4. If they take this pawn, we take back with our d pawn. Now rook e8 is indirectly eyeing the e4 pawn, so we need to be very careful. Just go bishop d3, and now there's nothing that black can do, just simply cast short. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to our king's pawn game territory. So this is just how you can still play your king's pawn game from here you'll be good to go so that's just one of the strategies how to play if black plays an early pawn to e6 instead of pawn to c6 let's look at another line all right now we've come to one of my favorite lines you start with knight to f3 d5 as always then you play pawn to c4 instead of pawn to c6 or pawn to e6 which we have already looked at, black may also play pawn to d4, gaining more central space. Now, I've already given you a hint by these highlights. We are going to play this in the style of the check Benoni. If you don't know what the check Benoni is or how to play the check Benoni, you can simply watch the video that has popped up in the card above after you finish watching this video, by the way. And oh, I even have a full course on the check Benoni with black pieces. So you can also find the link for my website in the description down below where you can purchase that course and my other courses at very affordable prices. So here we are going to play the reverse check Benoni starting with pawn to e4. Now there are two popular moves here. If black takes, don't worry, I'll show you what to do. But the most common move here is pawn to c5. That's what you're going to see your opponents playing. From here, our strategy is to go pawn to d3 first. Look at this beautiful triangle of pawns. Knight c6 is what they play. Now you can go g3 playing this in the traditional rating opening, but I don't like that again. Just go bishop e2. Our plan is to go knight bd2, then knight f1, and knight g3 later on so that this knight can at some point sit on a5. This will be our juicy square for our queen's knight. So that's why we play bishop e2. We don't want to cut so short very early. So pawn to e5 is what they play. Now you go knight bd2 with the same ideas. Let's say knight f6, one of the top played moves. Knight f1, then bishop d6. You go knight g3. If they play h6, maybe stopping bishop g5 or knight g5. Well, you just cast a shot. They'll cast a shot as well. Your middle game plan here will be very simple. You will first of all start with knight to h4. One of your knights should sit on this square. The f5 square. And it should be this knight. For example, if black thinks he can win your pawn right here because he's attacking your knight on h4 which is undefended well this fails due to knight takes e4 now you are attacking this bishop let's say if black takes our knight we can simply take his bishop and it turns out that we are up a piece so this is how tricky this opening can be and black has to be very careful okay let's go back now, back to this position where black plays pawn to d4 and it was here where I said just go with the reverse check Benoni and if they play pawn to c5, simply go pawn to d3. Knight c6 is what they play. Now you go bishop e2. You already know the plans. Pawn to e5, you simply go knight bd2. Knight f6 by black, 
knight f1. Now, after this move, you may see black playing pawn to h5 because they already know this plan of knight g3. So they don't like that. You are going to see them playing pawn to h5 or maybe starting with pawn to g6. Let me show you what to do against these moves. For example, pawn to g6, which is more solid. Now you can go pawn to h4. Just play this pawn to h4. They'll play pawn to h5 anyways. And now the simple plan is you are not going to put your knight on g3. Why? Because there is nothing that you will be attacking on these squares. And so this knight will sit on h2. That's the secret. We can play a waiting move pawn to a3. It doesn't matter. Let them play bishop g7 here. Now with bishop g7, we are the ones who are doing well because of this continuation. Watch. Pawn to b4. That's why we played a3 because we anticipated bishop g7. Once bishop g7 is played instead of a5, just know that we are winning. Because let's say if c takes b4, we take back with our a pawn. It doesn't matter even if the knight takes. We go queen a4 check and at the same time attacking this knight. So black has to play knight c6 and that's when we take the free pawn on e5. And I'm sure by this time the kingdom of Babylon should start trembling down. Anyways, and so after pawn to a3, black doesn't have to go bishop g7 because of pawn to b4. They have to play pawn to a5 for example, stopping this pawn to b4 pawn push and that's when we go knight 1 h2 our second key move let's say they go bishop g7 this time we just castle short they'll castle short as well and then we play knight g5 and i'm sure you can already see the reason why we play knight h2 because of pawn to g4 which we might play anytime from now all right now that we have some ideas of how to play the reverse check Benoni, let's look at what we can do after black plays something else. Let's say knight to a3, d5, then we go c4, d4, and then after pawn to e4, instead of black playing pawn to c5, well, they take on e3 with n percent. Well, after this move, I suggest you just go f takes e3, pawn to g6, and knight f6 are the top played moves. So for example, pawn to g6, that's what they may play. Here just go bishop e2. Yes, pawn to d4 is also playable, but that can wait. So just go bishop e2, planning to castle short. After bishop g7, you castle short. Knight f6, well, you can still go pawn to d4. That's up to you if you know how to play the d4 openings. But anyways, keeping everything in our king's pawn game strategy, just go knight c3, preparing to push pawn to e4. If black cast is short, now you can go pawn to d4. e4 is also coming. Let's say they play bishop f5, stopping pawn to e4. Well, you can just simply go knight g5 here. Again, we are ready to push this pawn to e4. If h6, well, we still go pawn to e4. And the best that black can do is to retreat his light squared bishop back to c8. That's when we play knight f3. And it turns out that we are the ones having three pawns on the center. So this is just how flexible this opening can be if you play it correctly. All right, let's look at the last line before we call it a day. Okay, now the last possible line is the knight to f6 line. Let me show you. So we go knight to f3 and black plays pawn to d5. Then we go pawn to c4. Now, instead of c6 or e6, or even pawn to d4, black may play knight to f6 in this position. And this is why I said this opening is full of transpositions. It can transpose back to the English opening or the Catalan. And I'm sure as you can see by this time, we are now playing the English opening, Anglo-Indian defense, Scandinavian line, which is very simple to play. Here you just simplify it again by taking on d5 with your c pawn. If queen takes, you develop your other knight to c3. So they are going to take with their knight on d5 and then that's when you go pawn to e4. Once again, you can see our king's pawn game structure appearing on the board. So knight to f6, if knight to f6, just go knight c3. c5 by black, you can just go bishop c4. So they will go pawn to e6 here. You just cast a short and from here, trust me, you are going to have a normal game. So this is all about our opening for today. This opening is not completely new. It's been there for ages. It's simply called the ready opening, but we were not just following the typical ideas in the ready opening, where white plays pawn to g3 and Fienkeros his bishop on g2. 
All right, if I told you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to check the link for my website in the description down below where you can purchase all my courses at very affordable prices. So peace out and see you in the next video.